Thank you for being here, everyone. I, I know it's not easy. End of the day, there's food just around the corner. And to stay here and listen to some of the top speakers is not an easy thing. Um, at the onset itself, I have to admit, uh, following such a wonderful speaker like Amma Balam Lakshmanan is really hard. But she has already touched on the topic that I'm going to talk today about. I'm not an expert on Saivism, nor am I an expert on Tamil. This is not a research paper. I just wanted to put a few views so that we can all discuss together. Most importantly, we start thinking about the next generations to come. So when I had a look on the internet, it says nearly 23 million people have left the subcontinent. They are living almost in every continent of this world. So we know pretty much every country that the subcontinent people have gone to. They have built wonderful temples. They have created wonderful institutions to promote the language and religion. The most important question is, can we sustain this? Can we allow the next generation to continue to promote this religion forever? So that was the key question I had when I wrote this article, when I thought about this. As I said, we've got multiple institutions across the world, but there are some key questions we need to think of. Who runs these institutions? When I say who runs these institutions, I don't mean which communities run the institution, which generation is actually involved in these institutions. Have we achieved what we wanted to achieve? Institutions like Cyber Mandram has been here for almost two decades. Surely we had a goal in our mind. Have we achieved what we wanted to achieve? The biggest problem I see often with community organizations that we have created is we are so emotionally attached to the institution that we don't want to be critical of its role. If someone criticizes its achievements, we, get personal, we take it personally, we get upset. Our community doesn't have a way to review the process of developing the younger generation. We don't simply have that process happening. And I always tell my friends, we need to do a reality check. We need to sit down and think, how many people here have children, grandchildren, or friends and family that are capable of taking our religion to the next level? I have been fortunate to be involved with some youth groups, particularly the Sydney Murugan Tamil, uh, the Sydney Murugan Youth Circle from its inception. I have moved with a few younger people. And then I look at generations that are involved in these kind of organizations. You have the first generation, which basically migrated from countries like India and Sri Lanka. That includes myself as well, because I was born in Sri Lanka. We were in a culture, we were in an environment where language and religion was freely flowing. So there was no major challenges. We have come and set up organizations here. But the most important thing is, we pass it on to the next generation such that they will be in a position to continue to pass it on to the future generations. Have we done that? One of my biggest concerns is, everyone I speak to will say, we need you. We need to encourage youth to participate. That's very true, and I'm very happy about that. But that doesn't mean taking some first generation younger people into an organization is the key. It's not the key. It's basically being able to recruit people who are born in this country to get them to learn the religion, to get them to be able to pass it on to their next generation is the key. And that's where we are lacking. And one of the problems I see with this is the linking of this great religion, Saivism, to the, the great language, Tamil. Generally, Tamils like to say, Saivamum Tamilum Tamilarin Kanga, which is true. We should be proud of our religion. Saivism probably is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, religion in the world. Tamil is probably one of the oldest living language in the world. We have to be proud of this. But where I have a problem is, why do we need, need to connect the two and say 
Sai Vishnu through Tamil is the best way to learn religion. I personally don't see it that way, because I often think if you connect these two and say Sai Vishnu exclusively through Tamil, you are almost demeaning both of them. Because if you look at the Tamil literature, we always boast about the Sangam literature. The five epics we talk about doesn't speak about Sai Vishnu, speaks about Jainism, speaks about Buddhism. And Sainism, by restricting people through only one language, you're going to minimize the people who are going to get involved in this religion. So this is why I think we need to sit, sit down and think carefully. Ideally, we need to promote both of them. In an ideal world, if we can promote Sainism and Tamil hand in hand, that's wonderful. But we should not restrict Sainism to be exclusively through Tamil. Look at the second, or second generation, basically children who have been born here. We all know their first language is going to be English. Regardless of how hard we push for the future generations, they're not going to be able to learn everything in Tamil. There are certainly exceptions, and when I speak to a lot of people, they would point out a few exceptions in the community. Some children have done remarkably well. They have learned the language, they have mastered the language, and they probably are learning Sainism through the language. But majority of the people, unfortunately, haven't mastered Tamil enough to be able to learn Sainism through Tamil. So again, we need to have a reality check so that we know how to promote our religion in the future. And after connecting Tamil and Sainism together, the biggest problem I have is resources. When I was involved with the Tamil youth group in, at the uh, Sidney Murugan Youth Circle here, we were planning to establish a Tamil Res or Sidney Murugan Resources Center. And people like Uncle Ravi were involved in the temple at that time. They gave us some funds and basically said, can you purchase some books from India to start a library at this temple? So we personally went to India, had a look, and I can tell you, for every 50 book that was there in Vedanta, there was one book inside a Siddhanta. So we haven't created enough resources for the next generation to actually pick up and learn Sainism from English books, English internet uh, pages, or even CDs. So we haven't created, created the resources, but we really want, or we hope, that the next, ge next generation would learn Sainism through Tango. It's actually a huge problem. So what I think we can do in future is basically the cyber school that we have set up, perhaps it's better to start bilingual classes. It's better to let, teach cyberism in English rather than to let cyberism die in this country. There are several institutions like Cyber Mandra which have the wealth and the infrastructure to promote this. There are Ardinos in India, and there's World Cyber Council. And one of the key institutions that currently does a lot of work through English language is the Kauai Hindu Monastery in Hawaii. They're writing several books in English about Sainism. So we need to bring that to the forefront so that the kids or the next generation has something to learn. So please think whether Linking Sainism to Tamil exclusively is a good thing. We need to start planning how we can move to the next generation. So I'm going to stop it there because food is just around the corner and I don't want to keep you waiting. But please take this as a, just a weak viewpoint so that we learn from something that we have already experienced in countries like Mauritius, where temples have become museum pieces. We don't want that to happen in this country. We would rather make our religion live forever. Thank you.